Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk Survivor Series. We talk Jerry Curl Juice and that giant egg finally hatches. Stick around. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time Learn in college. And the things you learn on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hi, I'm Sorgatron here from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. We're ready to talk about professional wrestling, men in tights, tight tights. Uh, with me to talk about tight tights is Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox, also hailing from the Pittsburgh, PA region as well. How are you doing, sir? Everything Sorg just said is true. We are here to talk about professional wrestling as if there is any other kind. Mm-hmm. That's the non-professional wrestling, I guess. Non-professional that's wrestling. That's just that's just football. And if you like football, go fuck yourself. Oh, Nobody likes football hey, except wow. for communists. Wow. Also with us. Let from- me tell you. All right, oh, we're oh, gonna wait, drop wait, wait. a bombshell. We'll start off. We'll start off this show properly. All right. Football is destroying America. That's right. I'm not afraid to say it because you know only a handful of people watch the show and they already know me. Soccer. Wow, you're really like talk about fucking soccer, Bobby. Wow, wow. Also join us from San Antonio, Texas, is the Wrestle Fan himself, Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitters. How you doing, Uh, sir? I I gotta say, pull on the LB train. I agree. Fuck football. I don't give a fuck about football. I'm sick of trying to talk with people about football. I don't give a shit about football. I only care about pro wrestling, and that's why I'm talking every Tuesday night. So let's do this. Bobby F. J. Town. What's wrong with America? Bobby F. J. Town, who probably also has an opinion about football from Johnstown, PA. How you doing? I like football. You like football? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And I promise you, I promise everyone out there, I will not fall asleep during the Wrestling Mayhem show like I did last night in the Hangout post post Raw show. <laughs> I think during the Raw show. I haven't looked during back the Raw show. I I'm fell pretty asleep. sure you fell asleep. You go back to the Raw recap over on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, the Raw wrap up from last night, and just look at the square with Bobby in the corner and watch him doze off. We had to yell at him afterwards to wake him up to go to bed, Bobby. It's um, been a stressful life. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here to ease your woes of your stressful life because we get to let loose and have let some mayhem happen here every Tuesday night live.sorgatronmedia.com or uh, follow the linky link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com you can join us in the chat room and communicate us be part of the show guys uh, and also uh, drop us a line or, I'm sorry you can follow the show if you can't join us live on iTunes for the audio and video versions Stitcher YouTube as well uh, just anywhere you look up Wrestling Mayhem Show and whatever is convenient for you if there's a way that you want to get the show minus carrier pigeon and snail mail um actually maybe snail mail we could do a little bit too in special Five cases it, it, let us know let us know we're, what are we missing out you think there's an audience out there we're missing out on where should we put this show uh you can let us know that amongst other things like your wrestling p- opinions and how much you hate football too at good times good times that's right good times at wrestling mayhem show.com Huh. Uh, or you can drop us a line and tell us with your voice box at 412-3, I'm sorry, 412-206-WMS0. That's a different number. That's my wife's number. I, two, three, I almost gave everybody three, my wife's three, number. 3 Did somebody say niner in there? On my head, in my head, we sang together. So let's start this show the only way I know how that I've been doing this for almost 400 Tuesdays. Uh, Let's get started with the fan mail. Who wants to read it this week? It's Dustin, I know. I'll do the Dustin mail. Do the Dustin. I like Dustin. Dustin's a good guy. (laughs) Dustin's a... Dustin's a gent and a scholar, and I'm buying time until the uh, document (laughs) launch. What? I'm going to call him Dustin Credible. (laughs) Dustin Credible. Dustin, God damn it, Bobby. Oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Dear Mayhem Americans, 
Last night on Raw, JBL made one of the more genuine comments on WWE television in a long time. Luke Harper put CM Punk in a move they were calling the Gator Roll, because it's the Gator Roll, uh, as Michael was explaining. Michael. And I got to say, the normally when people say Michael, it's, uh, they usually spell it M-A-G-G-L-E or some like combination of that. Uh, his take on the spelling was M-I-K-K-A-H-L. I love that. Michael. As Michael was explaining exactly why rolling on the mat makes sense to be called a gator roll, JBL replied, WWE Universe is very smart, Michael. I don't understand. I don't underestimate them. I simply want to thank JBL for pointing out on live television that their fan base is not as ignorant as they are treated at times. <laughs> How do we install that app again? What? How do we install that app again? <laughs> yeah. I, I still don't know. I'm never going to be able to install it. Questions! Questions! With the new entrance of Xavier Woods being debuted last night, do you think WWE will begin providing splash guards to the front four rows like at a Gallagher show? <laughs> Jerry Curl Juice is not a stain I would want to learn how to get out of my clothing. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's, he's actually been doing that for a while, but no one cares. In much smaller that. arenas. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Granted. Um, I, I, yeah, it was interesting that they gave him somebody else's entrance. I yeah. I what are they doing? Um, because he comes out with our truth. He comes out this. So I think they just they didn't get around for to picking music for him. Either I, that or either that or Brodus Clay's just gone, and they're like he's sort of like yeah, that. I when, hope, when they, go ahead, Bobby. I hope that that. Somebody mentioned this earlier today. I hope this means that we get the real Brodus Clay that was supposed to debut originally to come out, the monster. Mm -hmm. The one that only I liked. <laughs> and just destroy Xavier, Wood, or Xavier Woods for taking his theme song and his women. I like it. I like it. I like it. And you know? he say, you stole my theme song and my women. Stop yeah. it. She. And Ten is just going to be like, I'm just going to be over here. Okay, he's over here slapping Asians. Um, oh, for the right. record, uh, Jerry Curl oh. Juice is real easy to get out of your uh, out of your clothes. <laughs> uh, if it's on like regular like poly cotton blend, like most people wear, little club soda, um, soak it for about ten to twenty minutes, uh, wash as normal. If it's on leather, however, uh, you have to use rattlesnake blood. That'll bring it right out. Uh, mm. And then uh, hit it with a little can, resolve, a little carpet can I, cleaner. Can I, shines can I just, up like new. Can I? No, we'll only, the... we'll only work with rattlesnake blood and not viper blood. Can no I use viper tides? Blood. It actually does have to be rattlesnake blood, believe it or not. Can I use mm. Tide's rattlesnake blood pen? Bobby, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you promote a competitor's product on our fucking show? God damn it, Bobby. Are we competing with Tide? You know, of course we're, we're competing with Tide. Who else are we competing with if not Tide in their rattlesnake stick? What about Clorox? Jesus, it doesn't even have real rattlesnake in it. Rattlesnake sticks. Genuine rattlesnake. I'm glad we're talking about wrestling. Aren't now. you glad you joined us for this wrestling discussion tonight? Because I'm learning so much. Um, but hey, next hey, question. I'm going to learn more. Question it two. It might not be about wrestling, but they're not bored. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Question it's two. like I when I had to pitch oh, my Twitter yep. account to Gary Vaynerchuk, I said, you might not know what's going on, but you will not be bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to tell me about that later. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Heyman, another, another question, please. Number, number two. Number two. The dirt sheet forums are calling their shot with Cena unifying the titles. What are the pros and cons to having the titles unified? And do you think that this is a final conclusion at TLC? Uh since I'm sort of more for the unification of it, pro is that it makes things a whole lot less confusing. Um, it makes a definitive champion because the world's heavyweight championship is like it's. I mean, the title is the world heavyweight championship, and it clearly is not the superior to the WWE championship by any means. The WWE uh, is bigger than the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't you know okay. that? Yeah. But yeah, um, also, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, we talked about this last night. It sort of helps, like, a lot of times with the World Heavyweight title, they just sort of try to find, they try to figure out ways to make world title matches. They don't, a lot of times it doesn't have a lot of story behind it. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just sort of like, we need to get a world title match for the upcoming pay-per-view. Let's figure out something. And it just doesn't, it doesn't aid to the programming. So that's my pros. Cons? Oh, you're asking. They, he said, well, he said oh, pros oh. and cons. Oh, and okay. I was sort of, I'm sort of the more pro for this. So. Wait, I, I've, I've lost track. Are we, it's the pros and cons of unifying the titles? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, uh, Go ahead, Bobby. Con- cons, it takes away a title for somebody that needs a title. You know, yeah. like those guys that are on the the, and I know, and I know, there's the Intercontinental title and, and the the U.S. title, but it's another World Championship, and they're taking that away from somebody. Yeah, it, somebody's going to get pushed down the card. Is basically what I'm saying. It, well, the, the problem is, is you always have somebody on top now because of the way the brand split has fallen apart. So, mm-hmm. like before, it was like, well, they're not on top because you know every three months because we did mm-hmm. a joint thing, um, and then there was like the pay per view kind of miss, you know, heaviness on on deepness of roster. Uh, but I, I finished, I watched the uh, the history of fifty years of WWE uh, DVD over the weekend. And, and they, they made a good point about the brand extension was the reason you had guys like Batista and John Cena coming up, guys like Eddie Guerrero and, and Benoit, um, because they had this, well, you know, at the time, of course, they had this influx of guys uh, from WCW, and, but in other guys coming up, and they had enough to support that. You know, whether you, right. you, you know, say, oh, Raw was kind of eh, or SmackDown was kind of eh, at one time or another, there was a lot of chance for different things to happen, and we saw a lot of really cool stuff, I think, out of that. I think the brand expansion, the, the brand expansion was more pro than con overall in the long run. I, yeah, and I, but and I now... See what, I, the, I, I, I see what Bobby's saying. I, I think personally, though, that we live in an era where the championships don't necessarily mean as much. So you don't necessarily have to be a champion to be successful. Yeah. In yeah. My opinion. But I mean, like, you don't live and die based off a championship. But I, I like the idea that we would talk about this too. Like now maybe they can be more inventive about bringing people up now. Now, I mean, granted we've had two titles and how many times do you see a lot of those guys, those title run level guys, your Seamus your Randy Orton's, your big shows, just hovering around there wasn't even enough to do with them and there's two top tier titles yeah i mean i think something's happening well i think i think one problem you have is you have too many people that stick around too long this is like this is like the social security problem in professional wrestling um this this is too many people stick around so you can't figure out you don't know what to do with somebody after five years because nobody stuck around that long hogan didn't Bret Hart right. didn't. Shawn Michaels didn't. Now you have the big show who's been around for 15 years. You're running out of stuff to do with him. He's always kind of around. Mm-hmm. How do you keep him fresh? This is a new challenge for the professional wrestling industry at, as a whole. You see the Make same thing. Cry. We talk about TNA. It's got the basically the same 75% of the roster it did 10 years ago. That's yeah. why everything feels stale. That's There's people coming up, but there was more chances of that happening when there were two belts. And again, great point by Matt Carlin's in the chat room. If you need a belt, are you really that good as a wrestler? Um, I want to see what they do. Do we see an elevation of those, those two second tier titles? Do those get combined? We got rid of a women's belt so long ago. What has that yeah. really done for that division? Um, same with well, the tag I wouldn't, blame, I wouldn't blame that on the belt. I'd blame that on exactly, WWE exactly shit about the women. It's people being lazy, you know. It, 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 it's but I, and I and you mentioned like the whole brand extension aided because of the acquisition of WCW and ECW, and because they had a giant roster at that point. They're including now a lot of people from NXT and from the developmental stuff, and a lot of them are getting over, and a lot of them are being successful even without championships. I mean, some of them have championships, but their success wasn't due to those championships. Like the the rise of a of the Shield and of you know Biggie Langston and even Daniel Bryan. Like Daniel Bryan, yeah, was WWE champion, but like he was he is set pretty much. Yeah, plus a and, plus a one and never because of a championship. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Plus, at one time there were three World Heavyweight Championships in WWE. That's true. There was the World Championship, the WWE Championship, and the ECW Championship. Yep. Even though the ECW Championship wasn't as lucrative as it, it used to be yeah mm. or if it ever was you know but yeah. you know it was, it was still a world title 
Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. But I, Chavo Guerrero we'll held that championship. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective. What else we got here? Anybody else got any comment on that before we move on? Uh, I think uh, a lot of what everybody said was true. The um, This is the final nail in the coffin of the brand split, mm-hmm. which I'm going to call a con because there was nothing, almost nothing, that I liked more than a good old-fashioned raw draft. Mm-hmm. Fucking love the draft episodes, and they are no more, and that makes me sad. But uh, also, uh, it's whenever they unify these titles, I mean, they just... They just redesigned the WWE title. That's got to be a little telling, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some so, preparation. So, excellent. Yeah. Last that's question. All. That's all I got. Last question, sir. Last question. The American Pit Wolves recently received their new names for WWE. Why are they com- while they are completely ridiculous, I was wondering if you guys had your own ring names for when you were young fans aspiring to be in the wrestling business. Oh man! <laughs> See, I, I I saw this question, and I and obviously, like when you're younger, you like have dreams of like I'm going to be a wrestler, because uh, that's why anyone likes wrestling. Um, I I did I I was that way, but I never had like a name for myself. Nah, I, I don't never think did I did because any any names I came up when we did do backyard wrestling were lame. I realize <laughs> that now. Um, never had you a just good. Just called one. yourself Sorg most of the time, or Sorgatron. Uh, well, like yeah, what well, what was the one elder? St- why what was I called the elder statesman? Oh, oh because that the elder news- statesman because that-, that was your nickname on the show for no, a no, while. No, well, no, the newspaper called me that. That Juggalo article called me the elder oh, statesman, yeah, statesman yeah. of Juggalos. <laughs> so we just decided to call brilliant. me that when I hit people. Um, <laughs> and I there think was a, a Juggalo newspaper. No, no, there was there was an article. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, there, be well, there is probably. Um, no, there was an article in the local city paper about Juggalos because ICP was you know doing a show and they did a cover page about Juggalos and I was the one they talk, one of the people they talked to because uh, I ran at the time Western PA Juggalos dot com, which if you knew your mayhem history, Bobby is where this show came from. Well, yay, piece of shit. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We should do yeah, trivia. We should do trivia. Um, um, but uh, but yeah, and, and and that's what that came from. Before that, I think I used my old AOL screen name of Sir Psycho Sexy uh, or something like that. <laughs> I was a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. I had nothing. You had more inventive stuff there, LB. I I was um, I had a backstory. I had all this crazy shit. I was the last scion of hardcore, or just the scion. I had uh, a couple of good promos and some iffy matches and as i always say whenever i talk about my wrestling days uh i miss it to this very day not late, not too late to go train um but- i'm 30 i'm 30 <laughs> and i'm already half dead and wounded go fuck yourself <laughs> I'd have better I'd have better look tr- luck trying to work as a line cook in a busy restaurant kitchen than training for wrestling at thirty. Well, how does that even uh, whatever? Um, the rest of the email, sir. Rest of the email. Mine was lone the lone wolf. I even had a finisher maneuver called the pack attack and lived out this youthful nice. fantasy with many hours of gameplay from the creator wrestler feature in my wrestling video games. A fond oh, memory man. to look back upon from my youth. Regards, Dustin. Awesome. All right. Um, (laughs) We have a voicemail, of course, from our friend in the mainstream media. So let's go see what he had to say. Hey, Sorg. Hey. Background here. What's up? Your mainstream media huckleberry. What? Uh, It's 830 (laughs) at night. Will this voicemail actually get on the Mayhem Show tonight? I do not know. Well, it did. I have to try Sorg. Sure did. I had to talk to you about something. Is this a private voice? Between you and me. (laughs) You know, on the Facebook page, Yeah. that the whole thing, the Orton, Cena, two belts, ladder match at TLC, you know, you know, I called it. That's right. I called it on like Monday morning. I said it before anybody else. I even came up with a shitty idea of He's got to pull him down one belt at the end of the match. My idea. So, Sword, I need you to do something for me because there's one thing I love more than anything else in this world. Amen. And that's attention. <laughs> oh. Um, and sometimes even validation. So, I need you, need you to do child? something for me. I need you to raise my hand. I need you to raise my hand 
tell everybody else that your pal in the mainstream media called it. I called it. <clears throat> and that'd be awesome. If you would just, just tell everybody right now, just say, my parlance called it. I called it. Okay, off. Um, Great. questions. I want to get that. to the question. Um, what the fuck is going on right now in WWE? <laughs> what? <laughs> Kill me right now. And I'm trying to find like an alternative right now. Everything else sucks too. TNA sucks. Ring of Honor, I, I can't do it. What am I supposed to be watching right now? WWE, not doing it for me right now. It's killing me. I'm taking up too much time. Have a great show. Talk to you later. I Where's think, my hand? Oh, I, I think what you need to do is drive to Detroit and go check out some Squared Circle Review. Mm. Uh, my hair, what's going on here? I have I have headphone I hair, know. apparently. Sorry about that. Um, so straight hours of podcast. I will point out, we talked about this before the show. Uh, I know, uh, Eamon, you said he's not the first that you saw or anything. I, I, he, he, I'll give him that. He's probably, and I didn't pay attention, he probably is the first <laughs> in like our select group of people, like yes. maybe of like 20 people. Yes. Like probably. Um, no, you weren't the first one to call well, it because the entire internet called it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was pretty obvious. So, Wait, why does Goldust have a missing arm? Oh, that's not on the because shot yet, Bobby. Broke oh, spoilers. my podcast. Broke my Goldust. <laughs> so sorry. As we were trying his punching action or something, and it didn't work. <laughs> so that was a gift no, 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 no. from the members of the G Spot. I got the arm. I think we were drunk when that happened. We were probably drunk, but we called the hotline on the back of the card too because this is from like 97 um oh, so uh matt i uh, uh since you're not here amongst us here uh you are in the chat room uh this gold dust one arm gold dust vi- uh figure which is going to be appropriate here in a second is going to represent you as the person that called it let me don't i don't want to forget your wig there you go there you go <laughs> and this is me raising your arm it's pushing your wig It's a magic <laughs> chain. raising your arm in victory. This is a hair-raising experience. And I called it. And I called it. Uh, oh, uh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it. Bobby. <laughs> I forgot LB hates punk. I broke lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I told I, I the whole time before the show I was like I'm not going to drink I'm not going to drink I'm going to do the show sober tonight I've got two two bottles of wine in front of me and I was like I'm not look at this I uh, this I'm not a lie I've got two motherfucking <laughs> bottles of wine in front of me and I was like I'm not going to drink Bobby you are going to drive me to goddamn drink not going to get liquored up tonight <laughs> <laughs> In all fairness that was a really good pun <laughs> That's an oxymoron. There is no like good in pun. pun. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I love I all of this. That all this thing, this whole thing. Hey guys, uh, that, that's our fan mails and everything for the week, I believe. Um, but I did want to mention uh, we got something pretty big coming up. I want to start talking. Let's put it right up front, guys. I want you to join yeah. us. If you're in sure. Pittsburgh, if you can get to Pittsburgh on December 17th, mark your calendar, put it in your Google Calendar, put it in your laughing uh, far side calendar on your work desk, Bobby. Uh, put it put it in your iCal. Tell Siri. Tell your Google now. What? I don't have a far side calendar. You I should, have a Bobby. Far you side piece calendar. of shit. I should fucking get a far side calendar and put it on there. <laughs> and put it on the seventeenth. I know you only got a month left, but it'll be worth it to get your far side one page calendar. Seventy five percent off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but join us. We got a big event going on. If you're over, uh, go to our Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show, which I think is just uh, facebook.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. We have links all up there at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. We'll put, be putting some more uh, literature about this uh, out soon. But we're doing a big event. Um, we are doing a fan appreciation night. We have rented a theater, guys. <gasps> we rented we have, a theater. We what? rented. We bought a zoo. What? We bought a zoo. It's probably going to be the we same. A zoo. I'm going to ride it on an elephant. What? <laughs> what? Wow, you're coming to Pittsburgh on an elephant? You don't know. Wow. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> wow. But uh, December 17th, get down here to Pittsburgh. Uh, more properly, Dormont, PA. If you're in Pittsburgh, it's right off of the train line, off of the T line, off the subway line. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we were going to be down at the Hollywood Theater right down the square in the middle of Dormont uh, over on Potomac Avenue. 
Uh, not far from here, actually. Yeah. In my backyard, actually, in kind of in the backyard of where we originated this show. Um, but we have a, a, a we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna show No Holds Barred, the literary classic, um, on the big screen. We got it on DVD for you. <laughs> okay. So, so did you just refer to it as a literary classic? Yes, I did. Yeah. You should know class? that. You go to college. I didn't know it was a book. I believe, I believe Charles Dickens wrote <laughs> it. Somebody wrote it. Charles and Dickens. that was Vincent Kennedy McMahon and Terry, whatever his middle name, Ooh. Balea. And it's a classic. Shut your mouth. Uh, but we're going to be have showing. To find out. No, who wrote No Holds Barred? Yeah, but, uh, no, you know, I'm pretty sure it was, it, it was Hulk and Vince. Um, you double check that for me. But this will also be, first of all, our good friends, both represented here Papa Lunchbox and Bobby F. Whoop, that's not Bobby F. J. Town <laughs> will be representing the Mayhem Show and doing a little bit of riff tracksy kind of thing and, and uh, talking live over it. And uh, you, you guys can laugh, you can yell at them, uh, have some fun with us watching. No, 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 no. They can't yell at us. They can't yell at you? No, that's no. not allowed. No, no. Uh, okay. I don't know when we, we, we didn't discuss it's, the rules. It's performance. Me and Bobby are gonna go do a thing and and don't fucking yell. Yeah. <laughs> don't heckle us. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so <laughs> Noah's bar will be playing that, and then afterwards, uh, we will be uh filming for our four hundredth episode of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Four hundred Tuesdays. Sir, so. what do you think this is? No holds barred. What? What do you think this is? No holds barred. It might be. I mean, people might get the idea, you know. Um, so, so join us. Go. Uh, so we have an idea how many people are going. Please drop down to the Facebook page. It's going to be free of charge, um, of course, because I said it's a fan appreciation night. We want you guys to come out, have fun with us, have a good time, be part of the show. Um, especially when we do the 400th, we're inviting everybody out, including you know uh, friends of the show. Um, you know, everybody around, friends in general, fans. If I've never met you in person. You should come down. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're in the, especially if you're in the Pittsburgh area, if we, you know us from the IWC shows and our RWA shows or something like that, drop drop down, check it out. Um, Apparently, Eamon's going to come in and buy an elephant. Yeah, exactly. See hey, Eamon, spectacle. don't forget to pack your trunk. But we do want you, if you drop by, please. Fuck start. you, Bobby. Fuck you. <laughs> God damn it. I am going to fucking cut a hole in you and put my penis in it wow wow <laughs> things i hope don't happen at the dormont yeah, no. that's what's gonna happen uh, we're gonna get halfway through the movie and i'm gonna choke bobby to death with my dick my side's just gonna be all puns someone's gonna die in that theater <laughs> anyways but this place is a great old theater it's got a balcony <laughs> Don't oh great! For a balcony for lunchbox to throw Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's no holds barred. But no, uh, I'm um, double check, but I think it is BYOB now and all that kind of stuff. But I do want to. These guys are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we've done some work with it, with them here uh, recently. Right. Bobby and I are not for profit. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we do. We want you to come down, uh, make a donation to them to help them out because they got a big project uh, uh, to try to get a digital projector so they can keep uh, going in business and and partake and get your concessions, get your get your your popcorn, get your 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 soda and everything from them and help them out. Um, so we want to support them and we want to thank you guys for supporting us. Uh, so please come on down again. That's WMS Appreciation Night, December seventeenth, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, so that's less than a month now. away. Go again. That's uh, that's uh, uh, the facebook.com slash wrestling mayhem show and go check us out under the events uh, as well. So uh, please join us. We want to see you. And, and uh, if you can't make it out, of course, we're recording everything. Uh, so we're going to be releasing that. So, you know, show will be a little later as I have to process the damn thing. Uh, but we'll shoot and everything for that as well. So uh, uh, come join us. So with that, let's go to the Indie Minute. Indie Minute for this week. Uh, back in again here with WrestleFan. Or Amen. Or, I don't even know what my name is Who anymore. Who are you? I don't know. Who are I do you? know. I Jonathan do know someone's Buttmilk name. here with Jonathan Buttmilk's Indie Minutes. Who is that? That's my secret name, Lunchbox. Um, <laughs> That's his wrestling name when he was a kid. A name makes, that I do makes know. We call him that when we're making love. A name that I do know, who is a good friend of the show, is in the Indie Minutes. 
What? For a very special reason. What? And, what? and that is what? the news. We have indie wrestling news that isn't just like an indie wrestling show that I'm talking about. Uh, friend of the show, Logan Chulo, who uh, a lot of you can see in the Pittsburgh area uh, for companies such as IWC and various others. Uh, yeah, got signed with WWE. Yeah. He's running at the uh, WWE Performance Center. Woo! Congratulations. Congratulations. That's a well big done. mayhem bump right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Glad you didn't go to the uh, the other performance center for that other company, which is probably just like like a couple mats like thrown out on a on the. <laughs> They're not note. Voldemort. Right. The, the, other perform- <laughs> the other performance. The other. I'm talking about TNA. Um, it, but no. The other performance center is a uh, home improvement performance center. At, I, uh, yes. I do also understand that other friend of the show. Uh, uh, other other friend of the show, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Zima Ion, is supposed to be showing up in, I, in TNA again. Is that right? Yeah, I heard, apparently. So, so that'll be cool. So, so yeah, a lot of uh, local talents in the Pittsburgh area showing up on on uh, the television. So. Yeah, well, I mean, he's not on the television yet, or Andy. He's just starting off. So Showing well, up on Hulu Plus, hopefully. <laughs> showing up on Hulu Plus, or at, <laughs> least, or at least somebody's daily motion of the leaked uh, performance uh, uh, uh Performance skills, skills. promo classes. I wonder if you'll yeah. still try to do heavy metal Jesus. I doubt it. <laughs> heavy I metal un- <laughs> Heavy metal unproprieted God. Well, um, let's play real quick, real quick, spitballing. What do you think Logan Shulo's uh gimmick and maybe name will be when he goes to NXT? LB? That's a good question. Uh Logan Shulo's new name is going to be Devin Hackensack. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can and, see De- uh, I, I, in full honesty I can see Devin he looks like a Devin Devin <laughs> yeah um, and his gimmick is going to be uh, he's going to come up as somebody's bodyguard okay mm. okay yeah I think I think he's going to come up as somebody's bodyguard um, and that person will not be popular they will fail Within a year, he'll go back down to NXT and uh, come back under a mask. <laughs> okay, okay. What, wow. about, what about you, Eamon? Bold predictions. Oh, God, I'm never good with names. Uh, shit. First thing they come, when you look at that face and you say, I need to make a name for this guy, what are you going to do? Devin. Devin. <laughs> Devin. Christensen? <laughs> what is the son? <laughs> Christensen. I'm going to name him oh, Devin God. Devinson. Really good. You're totally. That's that's awesome. Sorry, you took mine. See, he's got a Christ in it, kind of like Christ, so it's sort of a play. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's what I think. And uh, what it'll do, we'll probably. Oh, uh, that's a good question. You know what? I would hope. I would hope uh, he would. I think he could possibly be like part of Enzo Amore's posse. Like a shorter Colin okay. Cassidy. Okay. All right. All right. I would enjoy that greatly. I'm just getting introduced to them on NXT, so I, I finally started yeah. caution up again. Yeah, because that's, also, that's been a could, while. That's been a while ago, so are you guys yeah, get yeah, caught yeah. up? That's August. If they're if they're still around, I could also see him uh, coming up as a as like a roadie of the three man band. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a guaranteed good. That's not that's yeah. not a commentary on his abilities. I just think he would. Oh yeah, really I mean, this well. is let's no. be clear. None yeah. of this is a commentary on his abilities. This is a commentary of how NXT appears to work from the outside. Absolutely not. Three MB is very good at their job. Yes. So yeah. Uh, speaking. <laughs> wait, 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 no, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. We didn't. Bobby, you had something, right? Bobby. Devin Devin's Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and his gimmick. And his gimmick is to be Devin Devin's mind. I I really feel he's going to just become part of the Ascension. That, yeah, be, like I, can I, see that. I, I, uh, I, hmm. I, I haven't really watched NXT, NXT, so yeah, I don't. Or he's the man, or he's the male version of Emma. I'm no. totally cool with that. All right, all right, all right. What's going else? What's going on elsewhere? Elsewhere, and also speaking of Logan Chulo, and also speaking of the, Pencil- the Pennsylvania area, 
Uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling has a show uh, coming up this weekend, Saturday, November 30th at the Ice Mine in Collinsville, Felix Pennsylvania. Uh, looks like a very interesting show. On uh, Some of the card, Jimmy Nuts uh, will be taking on Chance Profits. Uh, Facade, a uh, friend of the show, Facade, okay. will be there in action. Logan Chulo or Devin Chulo. Christensen, one of the many other names that we came up with, is uh, Devin, we'll Ryan Meyer. Mitchell in a taped fist match. So that will be intense and fun. Uh, so, yeah, if you want more information, uh, go and Facebook search uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Like I mentioned, that is Saturday, November 30th at the Ice Mine in Collinsville, Pennsylvania. And I'm so actually, go check them out. They should have DVDs, but I never see them um, online. So I think they might be just selling them at shows. So apologize if that's so not a accessible. So, you know what? Go to that show. Buy yeah, a DVD. Sure. Ride there Connellsville on an elephant. Or Connellsville. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Are you saying Connellsville or Connellsville? Collinsville. 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 Okay. Phil Collinsville. Right. That's not right. Shut the fuck up. I swear to God, Bobby. <laughs> I swear to God. Connellsville. I, sw- I am going to shave you and smoke your hair, young man. What? <laughs> I just got it. my hair cut. What's <laughs> up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or you're gonna cut it. Even gonna go get on. the rest of it cut. I'm gonna fucking <laughs> smoke a joint made out of your pubes. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, Wills will be there doing sound, by the way. <laughs> also, pull it together. Saturday, November thirtieth. Rendered me speechless. Um, <laughs> not Pennsylvania. Uh, and you're in Berwyn, Illinois. AAW is holding an event um, at the Berwyn Eagles Club. Uh, it's uh, uh, their Windy City Classic. Uh, Shane Hollister taking on Kevin Steen for the AAW Championship. Uh, also, the semifinals and finals of the Allegiance Tag Team Tournament. Uh, AAW, go check them out. They uh, do a lot of fun stuff. You can buy all their DVDs and video on demand stuff at smvod.com and smartmarkvideo.com. Uh, go support them if you're in the Chicago area. Uh, that's that's all I have for the Indie Minute. It's a bit of a light week, you know, with the holidays and all that. Not a lot of indie companies running. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, big uh, news. That's... Big news, though. Um, our friends at IWC Wrestling, uh, again, you know, again, we work with them with Sorgatron Media. Uh, now, DVDs now available, uh, digital download and video on demand at Smart Mark Video. Look at that. So go to SmartMark. Was it SmartMarkVideo.com? Everybody knows SmartMark, right? SmartMarkVideo.com, SMBOD.com. That's right. Go follow both of those. Go. You have no excuse not to now. No excuse. No excuse. The SmartMark has them. They have to be quality. They actually have the... No excuse. Just like IWC. No excuse. We don't have that show anymore. On SMBOD. It's not available. We don't have one up there because we have all the shows. No, no, we sent over all the shows for 2013, so you can get anything from this year. And I think uh, uh, there's a bunch of super indies on there. I think super all of these super indies will be on, um, and they're on. We're, they're, we had problems with some of the files, so uh, getting those sorted out. But they will be uh, all 12 super indies should be represented on there. If not already, they will be shortly. Um, so, fun. and I'm probably going to talk with them, say you know, see what else he wants. Uh, to put up there. So uh, uh, great to see. Uh, hopefully this will be a good platform for IWC to get in front of more eyeballs. Um, and and I have some other ideas coming up to maybe uh, um, share out, you know, uh, IWC, RWA here online. So keep an eye out for cool. that. I have I have an idea. I have to float it, but I have a, a, a small free idea for people yeah. to experience this. Free, so, small freaky idea? No. Well, it could be freaky. It could be freaky. It depends on how negotiations go here. Um, Does it involve an elephant? No. That depends on how RWA's booking goes. Keep me in contact. Okay. Um, (laughs) All right. (laughs) I think that's all right. I'm going to do commentary off an elephant. Fuck it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Surely, surely we know someone who has an elephant. No Spanish announced table here. Um, (laughs) But yeah. Big Maggle. (laughs) <laughs> Somebody photoshopped him on an elephant. It, it yeah, can't be that hard. Elephant. It can't be that hard. <laughs> that is the indie minute for this oh week, guys. Oh my god! And you can support this if you're really having fun. Please go buy. That's the WWE app. That's not ours. <laughs> <It's laughs> no, 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 it doesn't even no, work on no, this. Sword has converted you. Somebody tell him about this thing. 
I'll be talking about this. That's stuff. right, folks. For just a dollar ninety nine, you can get all the mayhem you could ever possibly want. You can get it for your iOS device, for your uh, Android device, or on Kindle, or on fucking everything. A dollar ninety nine, you can get video versions of the show. You can get audio versions of the show. You can get something special that we make just for your ass. That's right, folks. Mayhem show gold because you deserve only the best for shelling out your hard earned dollar ninety nine. Send it to us. We'll send you the app. Better yet, send it to the Google Play Store or your app provider or the App Store, and they'll send you the app because we can't actually do it. Dollar ninety nine, all the best mayhem. Get it today. Excellent. Thanks, Lion. Let's take a look at a little snippet of what's going on there and a little bit uh, for you guys on video. You'll get a little bit of basic sickness on the audio. Uh, what's the latest latest from RWA and Open Season 5 now available at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. We'll be right back. Hey. Hey. Sorg. Hi. Oh, no, I got a pee. No. Thanks, Bobby. Sorry. <laughs> WI pay-per-view. Oh, no, God. I, fuck, why did I mention that? I love... It was goddamn terrible. I do love when you guys were wondering if you were watching $5 Wrestling. Damn it, Kelly's not in the chat room. Are go pee. Go pee. Oh, go I was going Is anyone else going to answer? Are we chanting for Kofi? Kofi. Kofi. Okay, I'm gonna go pee. This is me like the person in the sun rose. I feel the reef, but I must have been the one chose. But when the day breaks, I see the orange glow. We're going no time, ready for a more show. And as the day breaks, I try to stay face. This is beautiful, there was nowhere to place me. I've been lost for years, but it makes sense now. My man is ready, barely feel I'm let down. Rose in the concrete like my home. Folks, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> Holy shit, that DVD looks magnificent. I'm going to buy seven copies, and I probably got one free. Folks, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and what we like is wrestling. And you know what's great about wrestling? How good it used to be. So let's remember how good wrestling used to be in a segment we like to call Remember When. I remember when. Again, again. Remember when. Again and again. Multiple title holders. It is a rare uh, but uh, amazing occurrence when one professional wrestler will hold multiple titles at the same time, whether it be two tag belts or two uh, belts from different federations. It's a thing that happens. It's unique and it's awesome. I remember in uh, one of the most interesting times in WWE history, recent history, Rob van damn he held two titles at the same time and not dinky little shitbag titles he wasn't like european and 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 butt sex champion he was the wwe <laughs> champion and the I ecw miss, at the I miss same the era time with that championship i missed the butt but the championship <laughs> <laughs> that championship <laughs> it's it's oh, been <laughs> Um, so, uh, he had both of them at the same time and it was amazing and it was interesting. He won one of them from John Cena who saw that coming a bunch of ECW fans. Wow. If you know anything about Rob Van Dam, you know, he's a wrestler. If you know anything else, you know, he loves pot. And if you know a third thing, he's buddies with Sabu who also loves pot. And then everybody in the world found that out because their asses got arrested, uh, for speeding and having a bunch of pot. In the car. Surprise, surprise. In Ohio. Rob Van Dam shows up on Raw almost the next day, loses the WWE Championship in a match to uh, – loses it to Edge. John Cena was also there. The very next night, uh, he goes on ECW, loses the ECW Championship to Big Show because Heyman turned on him. And that, as they say, was that. Heyman. Don't smoke pot. Speaking of pot, um, one thing I remember when, and by remember when, I mean I remember looking at it. Uh, I remember watching a bunch of old SmackDowns and Raws from 2000, and there was a cool double champion during that early period, and that was the Eurocontinental champion, Kurt Angle. 
I remember watching those segments, and those were fun times. Because that was cool, Kurt Angle. That was, like, really comedical, like, funny, like, interesting, like, American hero Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. And I actually really like that gimmick from what, I, from what I've watched it in I the past. I miss that, Kurt Angle. We already, we already know how that turned out. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, no, that was fun times. And I, and I think it was a cool concept. And getting both of those belts, like, what, like, three months into his run was kind of cool. So, yeah. Bobby... I'm going to go off on a limb here. One of my favorite all-time wrestlers. You're going to go off on a limb? Off on a limb. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know words. Don't you only me. know puns. <laughs> I only know puns. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> no. No. Why aren't you in my hangout? Why can't I mute you? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going with one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. Um, I had a column dedicated to this guy's catchphrase. Um, picture it, WCW, Lance Storm wins the United States Championship, the Cruiserweight Championship, and the Hardcore Championship, and redesigns them so they look Canadian. Beautiful. All three. So Nice. That, that's that's right. mine I'm going with. Awesome. Guys, the ultimate one. Oh, I didn't even mean to do that. The oh. Ultimo Dragon was one that really sticks out for me. Uh, Cause I remember back when like all oh, this foreign wrestling was new and cool to me because Tony Schiavone, not no fuck that guy. Uh, the other guy, Mike Tanay was telling about luchadors <laughs> and Ultimo dragon came from Japan, but I think I thought he was Mexican anyways at the time. And he had all these belts that I never heard of and still don't really know what all they are. Um, <laughs> that was the greatest um, I, I, I love that. It, that. That's that's kind of my main. And I think at the time he's holding it there in the in the picture, the cruiserweight championship with WCW uh, added to the crown jewel collection that he had going on. Although now these days, I wonder if half of those belts were from promotions that didn't exist anymore, like some other people I know in the indies. Um, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> but there's, um, but yeah, no, no, that that that's kind of the big. I'm the also he had nine belts at a time, I believe. So. Ultimo Dragon. Anybody in the chat room? Um, uh, Matt, Matt, Car- Matt, Matt Carlin's, Carlin's actually. Whoa. Matt Carlin's actually wow. brings up. Whoa! Everybody, uh, calm down. Hello, Matt Carlin. <laughs> Matt Carlin. Do I need to raise his hand again? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Matt Carlin. Do I hear Matt says, Carlin's? Matt Carlin's is ready to speak. You guys. No, he brings up the point. Got to be on video for that. One I said about um, the the uh, hardcore championship was renamed to the Saskatchewan Hardcore International Title. Or the shit and, and what was the uh, the uh, cruiserweight championship? Was the um, under a hundred kilos championship or something? Yeah. <laughs> Good uh, stuff. Fun times. Fun oh, is that what times. we got? Is that what we got? All right, guys. Thank yep. you. Uh, it, w- hey, if you want to support the show again, go, go to the fan. Re- you know, you want to go to fan appreciation. Note, and now you're thinking, what should I wear? The fan appreciation night. Well, what should I wear as I see Eamon coming on nothing. the phone? What should I be wearing? What should, should Eamon wear be wearing nude. as he that's, comes in on that in. elephant? No, no LB, because that is counterpoint <laughs> to this ad. Um, I'm going to wear a suit of pigeon feathers. Also, counterpoint to this ad. You should go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. We got some great stuff there. We got the WMS logo, property of, w, of, property of Mayhem, designed by the great uh, Alex Cars, as well as he also designed the Good Times, good times. at good WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Times. Uh, where, where the email address that you know and love over the years that has served us for nearly 400 episodes, uh, 1999. And of course, if you go to ProWrestlingTees.com, you can not just get our fantastic stuff designed by our friends of the show. You can also get Chris Hero. He's on the indies. You can go represent that with his old school classic shield, um, as well as other guys like Joey Ryan, like the Gold Dust, um, and and other other feds and podcasts and, and all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, like Christopher Daniels, Cole Cabana, of course, and a lot of people you see uh, in and out of TNA as well and Ring of Honor. So go check all those out while you can. And and like I said, while you're there, our friend of the show, Zima Ion, that we just talked about, and he's been current Super Indie champ. We've been working with him here in IWC. Uh, he's got a couple shirts going on. Uh, so you can go pick that up alongside your Wrestling Mayhem Show awesomeness. So ProWrestlingTees.com, go check it out. 
and have some fun with that. Uh, so let's get back with it. Uh, you know, um, do we want to talk about we talk about Survivor Series? I feel like we talked about Survivor Series already because we talked about Raw, and Raw was a lot like Survivor Series. In that it was entirely Survivor Series. And as in as yeah. It even had a Survivor Series match. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I will say, uh, uh, if you had anyone who reads The Best and Worst of Raw column by Brandon Stroud, he puts it perfectly uh, uh, in one of his worst entitled, This is why we don't, this is why we stream pay per views. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Which I didn't do this time. I was actually at a pay per view party. So You bought it. You paid money for it. And how do I, you feel I, about that? I paid like five bucks for it. Um, <laughs> but still, you paid for it. It was. Okay, like it was a fine pay per view. Like it wasn't terrible. You had it fun. was just super predictable. You had fun. Yeah, nothing changed. Like literally, nothing changed in the storylines. It just happened. Not really. It, it just yeah. happened. But you know, I, and I know the main event. I, I, I the know, biggest problem I think was the main event seemed like such an afterthought. And and and, and I think uh, maybe it's perspective. I know I feel like I'm like maybe you're looking at wrestling the wrong way uh, with a lot of these. <laughs> uh, but but I think about I was like, oh, nothing happened. It was like, well, did you enjoy the show? Did you enjoy the wrestling? Did you have any? Oh yeah, my I mean, god, yeah, they did I mean, that moments. You know, I granted, imagine. I think all of it happened in the first match. It takes it takes a lot for anyone to not enjoy wrestling, in my opinion. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't for some people, but for me, like it takes a lot for me to not enjoy a show. So I mean, but I, and and that's the problem. Cause I, I, I worry, you know, all these people writing about wrestling, and I think I think they have to go negative so they have something to talk about, right? I mean, that's I, that's how the news goes, right? Some, um, sometimes shows are shitty though, and and it's yeah, not yeah. A, it's not a bad thing. I liked. I liked the Survivor Series match. I think Roman Reigns is amazing. Yeah. And he's yeah. fucking killer. He proved At the that same last time, night again. I feel like the six on six would have been better. Yeah. And I that's agree. my personal opinion because while the five on five was fun, uh, there was a lot of people in that match that didn't do a lot. And at the same time, it just didn't feel as important. Mm hmm. It, Survivor Series, I think the biggest thing, it's not, it felt like a battleground. Like from a couple <laughs> oh, no, of battleground ago. felt like a Survivor Series. Get it right. But no, because if you look back, Survivor Series never really meant anything. It was fun to watch. Right? Am I wrong? <sighs> like, for those that aren't aiming, uh, think back to when you watched the first few Survivor Series. There was really nothing at stake, except for, sorry, bragging rights. Was your sole yeah. survivor? Like, <laughs> no, there, I understand. There's that. no belts. Oh, in a, in a, there's in no a belts. In, it was like, oh, let's see what happens when we get all these wrestlers together that never team up against four other wrestlers that never team up, um, and and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe we're in a that, world. That's fine where, if it's that case, though. What's that? In in this case, it's just like another pay per view. We had one Survivor Series match. Well, I'm sorry, two Survivor Series. We matches. did have two, technically, yes. And the rest was just like a normal pay per view. So it wasn't like it was a pay per view filled with Survivor Series matches, and it was like a a fresh thing where it's like there isn't a lot of storylines. There were storylines. Just I, everything you know, felt you know, very no, no, predictable no, no. and very I don't care the if there's no storylines the on a wrestling show. I want to make sure there's wrestling on a wrestling show. Do we be happy with the wrestling on the wrestling show? It was fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't fine. It was great. Really? Okay. Excellent. I don't understand. I watched the same pay per view that everybody else watched, and they put on, it was fucking great. Every single match, with the exception of the main event, was great. Mm -hmm. I even enjoyed really? Ryback versus Mark Henry. I did too. You I enjoyed, loved the, you I enjoyed the, Mark the Henry Diva came Survivor out. Series. You enjoyed the Diva Survivor Series. You know what? There was a lot of good parts to that match. Agreed. Yeah, half the Divas Agreed. barely wrestled, but you know what? The ones that did, about half of those did really good. I loved watching some of them uh, uh, sell certain oddball moves like they got shot and pinned. Um, that was interesting. You wait, you that like was interesting. That? Um, it, I, you okay, like that wait, that people got pinned over the stupidest shit. I was entertained. Fuck you. Oh, I was entertained because I was laughing my ass off. Yes, and I consider that a plus. 
I no, no, have no. A, no, you a, should, I have an opinion so that is going to prove unpopular, I'm sure, with some asshole out there. But you know what was a really fucking good match from Survivor Series? Mm. The Miz versus Kofi. And they fucking did it again on Raw. I don't care that it was The Miz, and I don't care that it was Kofi. They have had terrible bland you know, runs for a long time. You know what? You know what? Miz is, Miz is a heel now. Nothing. Yeah, nothing so no, he's not. Unless it involves no, Michael Strahan. Well, he kind of is. Yeah, unless. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is, I, I, I retract LB, my statement. LB, nothing hmm? on the pay per view I thought was bad. I just, I mean, I love the Survivor Series match, the main one. I thought the Survivor Series match was really good. I thought the Brian Punk Wyatt match was good. I didn't think it was great. I don't think it was as good as the stuff they've been doing recently on Raw. Like, I and Curtis Axel and Biggie Langston was fine. Like the John Cena Bruno Del Rio match was fine, but it was just by the numbers. And the same with the main event. By the numbers. Every wrestling match. Very by, by the, the numbers, numbers, sir. Three. Not true. I thought it. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I. I thought the main event was not good, and that was the only thing on the card that was that was lame. Can I, I ask every you other match I, I saw? I enjoyed thoroughly, which is very rare for a, a a chemical combination of me and a pay per view. Can I ask why you didn't like the main event though? I'm curious. I was. It was just. It was boring. <laughs> yeah, it felt like an afterthought. Just like last night. Yeah, it was so boring. Uh, like I didn't, I didn't have anything invested in the outcome. I didn't care who had the title, who won it. I didn't care about the storyline. And you know, Big Show and Orton are not the world's most electrifying wrestlers. <laughs> so I was tired and bored at that point. Yeah, I feel. But sleepy. man, Miz and Kofi, I did not see that coming. <laughs> oh, that was good. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like, and as much as you, like Survivor Series doesn't mean a whole lot, and I get that, but I, I don't know. I feel like that six on six could have put it over the moon. I thought the wrestling was good. I think, like, like I said, Roman Reigns was amazing, and I'm so glad he's like being amazing and just doing great stuff. Um, there's it stuff I'm interested much enjoy in, that. but it and and like I said, it's it's literally. It's literally a pay-per-view that could have been missed, not just because of the show, but solely for the fact that all the same matches happened on Raw. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's the thing, and and, and I feel like you know, you know we kind of I think you guys kind of saw it with Impact too. Um, I I think they do, they do make sure you don't feel like you you. Okay, the, who didn't watch uh, nobody here? Everybody here watched Survivor Series. I know some people in the chat room said they didn't even bother to uh, find the stream. Did you really see? Um, did you really feel like you missed anything? And we talked about nothing really happened, but you really don't feel like you missed a show that was vital, right? I, right. I did yeah, not exactly. I did. I did not watch Survivor Series. Okay, I, I did, however, watch Raw. So it was yeah. How did, I got how caught did, up the next night? How did Monday feel for you? I, it felt like a pay per view, <laughs> <laughs> and the main and event maybe it's was a bigger still problem, boring. And maybe it's a good problem to have. Yeah, the main event was still boring. Maybe that's the de-emphasization of the pay per views. Maybe the it, Raws it, have been amazing lately. Yeah, like, good, they've been really good. good. Question, good question. Uh, how much of the revenue comes from pay per views anymore? Y yeah. yeah, you know, and, and the funny thing is, aside from probably UFC, um, you know, they say consistently WWE has always been at the top of the pay per view business. Over the years, but I wonder, um, they're probably still in the top whatever, uh, five, probably, um, but how much money does that bring them versus everything else? If they got yeah. rid of pay-per-views tomorrow, and I they... I can't remember who said last night, um, who asked the question, uh, do you think they make more off of commercials during Monday Night Raw? I think or... AJ asked that, honestly. Was it AJ? I think no, it was... I asked it. Oh, did okay. you? Yep. You're kind of AJ-ish. I'm AJ liked. Oh, hi, Mad Mike. Yeah, Mad Mike. I, I realized I forgot to invite everybody back in for the for the thing. You're, were you joining you for, uh, from your iPad again? Yes. This is an interesting it, angle it, you have going on here. So <laughs> For the holidays. For the holidays. <laughs> Up in Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm still not saying it right. <laughs> LB, does that count as a pun? What? Poughkeepsie. 
No. Yeah, it does. I'm legitimately trying to say it though. Does that no, count? No, because then you're implying this place is a piece of shit. I don't. Not. I don't know that. I don't know that. Nobody that is, it's got a funny York. little name. <laughs> that's the, that's like if I said where you're from is called Schittsburg. Hey, no. No. Hey. That's trying too hard, and that hurts my feelings. Um, no, your neck a little scares me because I realize it's really close to Sleepy Hollow, and I've been watching that show. That's an awesome show. It is an awesome you have to show. pay for water, Sorg. Um, WWE. <laughs> Careful, they, that uh, place will make yeah. you lose your head. Oh, no, no, no. And oh. what I've found here, uh, it says revenues from the live and televised entertainment segment increased thirteen uh, percent to eight point nine million. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a. I thought that was a percentage of their revenue. Okay. I'll keep looking. <laughs> keep looking. Well, you go with the financial stuff. You always keep us uh, up to date on that kind of stuff. Um, da -da 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 -da. Wow. Their stock's doing good. They're up 96%, $14.78. Yeah. WWE <laughs> stock. Again, going back to this, this is a different kind of company. This is this is a corporation. They're, they're manufacturing stars in their NXT and everything. So, I mean, it, it, it's not going to be the way it used to be, right? So, um, but but you know, I, I do wonder though: Are they going to? Could they de-emphasize the pay-per-views even more? You know, or is it just kind of well? This is what we do, and it brings us money, and it makes us enough money to keep doing it. And even if half the people are uh, getting it on a stream, because anybody that's you know really, I think anybody that has half a brain and can do a Google search can find a stream. Um, <laughs> Not gonna say everybody here does it. But I do it. Okay, he did. Uh, but it happens. This is something that happens, you know. And it happens with WWE. And I really hope we're not doing that with like Ring of Honor and smaller companies. But it happens with WWE. But then again, I know it's not ethnically, ethnically, ethically, ethnically. Right? It's not ethnically right either. Um, that uh, uh, well, you know, I give WWE a lot. Of my money, <laughs> you know. Can we, are we all on that lines? Like we all go to the live shows. We all do, you know. Maybe get toys or magazines or whatever else. Or we 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 we're all watching the shows and going to the website, so they're getting that ad revenue uh, as a piece of us. Um, so does that lessen the the hurt? The the maybe WB owes me to go watch that pay per view kind of thing. I mean. Uh, I mean, it was a weird discussion to have, but but I don't know. What do you guys think? I uh, it's hard to say yes or no. It I just doesn't. It's near impossible, and we've mentioned it before. It's near impossible to dole out that kind of money every single yeah. month for those pay per views. Mm -hmm. It's just like like I'm curious, but I'm not sixty dollars curious, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, or whatever the cost is. So, and not that Please it's just fucking give me a pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> He's still doing his research. Like my friend orders uh, orders the pay per views every month. Yeah, but he has a bunch of us over, and we all contribute to the price. So we we only pay about maybe ten bucks or so. And, per and month. I think that's the idea to do it. But again, to do that every month and to get everybody organized, I can't. I couldn't even think of getting enough people to to make it worthwhile. You know, because it, everybody's so scattered. You know, is your friend's house a blast area? <laughs> <laughs> And even that's not even easy to get to. Mike, the unsanctioned one. Mike, yeah. I know, I know, my, you know, you can't, there's not even any blast areas in New York City proper last I knew. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's an issue. We have to go to Greens, Greensburg? Yeah, Greensburg. Greensburg. Uh, and that's not even offic an official blast area. It's not even an official one. I, no. We gotta go Greensburg, or there's one up Fox and Hound up McKnight Road. I mean, that's kind of... This, well, Greensburg's a hell of a drive, you know, and McKnight's up there. It's not accessible to everybody. Um, you know, it's not easy to see these to one point. Um, but then again, they are making strides. I said, you know, I would love the option to be able to watch the pay-per-view. I can get it on Xbox. I'm kind of afraid to because of the problems I've heard about. Um, but it is an option. So, like, now, and maybe I'll think about this, actually. Now I could get a bunch of you guys over. Well, not Eamon unless he comes on his elephant. Uh, yeah. Or Mike on whatever exotic animal he wants to bring uh, from the Bronx or Poughkeepsie or wherever the hell he is this week. Um, but but you know I can do that. And I don't even have cable. Uh, I, I think it's cool. That that's an option at least. Um, but 
I don't know. Actually, it got me thinking. Now I kind of want to experiment. But we're going to Royal Rumble, most of us, I think. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, oh, hey, yeah. I can do that. I can't wait for it. Uh, because we got the fan access. Ring of Honor's coming to town. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff. You guys I can't. I can't go to fan access. Hey, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. I can only go to the wrong. We're going to talk to you, Bobby. We're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to point to the WrestleMania sign. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? No, no. Just point, point at that monitor behind you. There you go. There you it's go. Blank. It's blank, sort That's the We can imagine <laughs> WrestleMania on that screen. Um, but still, I mean, yeah, we, we participate, you know, uh, with all that stuff. Uh, but anyways. Oh, yeah, yeah, field. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What yeah, was that? Yeah. What was that? What's with this artsy off the screen shot you got going on? Sorry. Hey, right, welcome leaning. back well, to I'm the show. Through, uh, I'm going through WWE Studios' uh, annual report, which is the driest shit in the world. Um, <laughs> to the question, Matt Carlin's, is that Ring of Honor show worth going to? I have not been disappointed by the TV tapings or the the non televised straight to dvd live show they had here in pittsburgh um whatever you think of their television show you will enjoy their live show any any ha, live show ha, I, I found it i found and it and i do believe and i don't think this is a secret that uh, paul london should be should be on that ring of honor show when it comes to town mm. so any any, 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 live, any live wrestling Second. is great any live wrestling is great. Like it just being in the, it's the atmosphere. Not if you go to a Ring of Honor show, that, it's a you say that to two CW's face. <laughs> <laughs> you got to listen it's to the Wrestling Mayhem show gold for that one. Yeah, um, th- we, we're not talking about that. Um, but no, <laughs> still sore <laughs> subject. Still sore subject. Um, I'm blinded no, by the lights. <laughs> if you C-Z-W. if you get the heads up, and I know we're doing indie sort of, but. Um, if you go to a Ring of Honor show for the first time, it's a big difference um, yes. because it's very long. Um, oh yeah! And, Wait, did you go to a TV taping? And a lot of the matches are very long. That's Ring of Honor. Wait, did you go to a TV? No, taping I went or to regular? a show. I went to a regular show because the TV taping yeah, was like six episodes. Are... Holy fuck! Six hours of wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, like an average Ring of Honor, an average Ring of Honor match is like forty-five minutes. <laughs> Okay, it wasn't that bad for that, TV, that's what but... I'm so worried. I, I don't believe uh I don't believe David Richards and Eddie Edwards I don't think are going to be able to make it an NXT because I don't believe that they can have a match less than fifteen minutes long. Or <laughs> or they're able to have an NXT match in their sleep. And we kinda of glossed over, but American Pitbulls, is it? Um yes. so what am I hearing that they're getting hot shotted to the main roster to see how they do I, in the tag division? I don't believe that. I don't I don't they, believe that. What that. what did these guys do? Nobody to... gets Nothing. hot shot at anyway. No. Nothing. No. And no, if you no matter how established you're at anywhere else, you go through the system. Yep. If you're the TNA champion, I would champion, like to mention that just like a week or two ago, one of the email questions was, "Who would you like to see in the WWE?" And I said, "Davy Richards." And then the next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm I, and as a as a indie guy, I'm still not entirely convinced. I may I feel like maybe Eddie could work. I don't think that Davey and maybe I can be wrong. And obviously, going to that performance center, you're learning the WWE style, and you're obviously you. changing a lot. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if Davey can do it because it's not just a Ring of Honor style or an indie style. Davey Richards' style is very different. Mm-hmm. Like even from like a Chris Hero or a Sami Zayn or a Claudio, like it's very different. I don't know. It's I, the reason. Why, it's my opinion. The reason why Loki wasn't so successful. So. Okay. Okay. True. Well, I think. I think no matter where you come from in indie wrestling, no matter where you come from, that's not WWE. The the whether you sink or swim in WWE is whether you can adapt to them. Right. Because either way, you got to play their game. Whether that be whatever happens backstage uh, so, in that organization. I mean, this is the same as 
you know, me doing my little business here and then going and working for a corporation. I got to start playing by their rules. It's a business. Sure. I'm completely paraphrasing an interview I heard recently, I think. Um, so I just, I know I'm aware I, of this. I will say, speaking of that. Oh, um, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, what, Eamon, finish your thought and then we'll go to Mike. I was just going to say, speaking of that, uh, there's a new shoot interview that our video released with Chris Hero. Yes. Um, post his WWE release. Um, I'm definitely thinking of buying it. I've only watched a 10-minute preview, and it seems very interesting. It does. Because he seems honestly very humble. Yeah. And I, just like I learned a lot. And he really explains the system a lot about mm -hmm. how um, – how they sort of want to bring you in as a guy that people can watch and uh, become like attracted to, mm -hmm. and then they'll develop backstory. Like they, that's why people that get the indie cred get sort of repackaged because they want to sort of, you know, it's more about what the people see on television. And honestly, it, it made me think of when I first got into wrestling. I didn't get into wrestling because I knew the backstory or whatever. I got into it because I saw something that was really like, like action packed, and I was like, I need to watch this. I need to follow this. It's like the that's why I got into wrestling. person version of Who Shining, right? Mike, what you're saying? Uh, I was just going to make a joke, but now it seems a little <laughs> bit. Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry. Say, so in order to become big in WWE, you're saying it's all about the game and how you play it. Yes, and even more it, so it these is. days. It is, and that's what Hero talks about as well. I mean, like, he talks about how um, he mentions that Triple H is the Vince of NXT in the fact that he's in I the like gorilla that. position calling all the shots, basically. Mm -hmm. And he implies that uh, Claudia uh, Antonio Cesaro's two out of three fall match with Sami Zayn was – what got him that like main event spot with Daniel Bryan on Raw mm -hmm. that one time? Mm -hmm. Because Triple H was so impressed. I believe by it. Him. I so believe yeah, it. you do have to impress those guys, and you have to be consistent. You have to show that you can, you know, bust out some really good stuff. Yeah, and, and for as much as we, oh, Triple H is gonna bury blah blah blah, you know, I I think we still attribute his hands on stuff lately to why we were enjoying wrestling on Monday nights, why we're enjoying yeah. wrestling the last year and more than storyline. I can't um, remember such a consistent pace of great professional wrestling matches on raw. Yeah. I, I, I think regardless, um, I, I listened to some old interviews. Um, I think it was, uh, Nash and or hall on, uh, uh, stone, stone Coast podcast where they talked about, you know, uh, you know, hang with triple H and say, Hey, we're just two, we're just a bunch of guys that love wrestling and hate the, all the other bullshit. That's why we hung together. Um, and even like saying to like Vin, uh, Vince coming up them one time and, and said, Hey, you know, kind of like, like, Hey, am I in part of the click too? And they're like, yeah, cause you love wrestling. You know, these guys, for whatever you think of them and whatever the stories and all that kind of crap, they're guys that are like are really passionate about wrestling. Um, and, and it's pretty cool that one of them gets to kind of bring that around, you know? Well, that, I mean, that's also kind of through rose-colored glasses of theirs because – Of course. It depends, it depends on who you – because, you know, I'm sure they all have a passion for the business and everything, but they all had a passion for getting each other over too. Like, yeah. Like they, I, they, gonna say Tom was going to work with all of them consecutively in order as champion. Mm -hmm. Like that's a little bit of bullshit. But that, that's wrestling, and that's what happens, and it sucks that that's what happens, but that's what happens. I think Triple H isn't so dead set on, I need to be the star, I need to be whatever. And yeah, he has those tendencies every once in a while, but I mean, he still, I think, has a big focus on making people. Like, I'm sorry, no, he didn't bury Daniel Bryan, guys, he didn't. Daniel Bryan is to the point where people during the Randy Orton Big Show match at Survivor Series were chanting for Daniel Bryan. Um, mm. That doesn't mean he isn't buried. He's not buried. He He's not buried. Like <laughs> Ryder, Survivor Series 2011, right. he wasn't on the card. But we're just he, gonna he, chant. He, Daniel Bryan has main evented pay per views for the past what four months. Besides Survivor Series. Uh, he's been constantly in the main events on Raw. He's been a focal point, no matter even if now he's not in the WWE title picture. Um, a focal point you know, what, Triple H, I'm not going to say Triple H hasn't buried people in the past. Remember that time when uh, Paul London and Brian Gandrick like saved him from an attack, and then he pedigreed them for no reason? That's burying people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah That's burying yeah. people, guys. Yeah. Not doing like a turn at Survivor Series. That's not burying people. You know, Daniel well, Bryan is been the most over he's ever been this year 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to see if if this all turns out with Daniel Bryan like winning at WrestleMania or winning the Rumble or something like that, then it's fine. But if it doesn't, then it is just kind of squashing all the momentum he had, just like he did a punk. I don't think it is. He's still. I, I, I don't think. You know. I don't think it's bearing. If, hey, how is it bearing if Daniel Bryan goes out there uh, twice a week and has a kick-ass match with somebody, and the kids are yelling "Yes, yes, yes," and buying the goat beard whatevers <laughs> and everything kids. like that? He's on everything. I think your. I think your perspective of burying. I mean, like Santino is not buried or less over or anything. No, regardless of him not doing anything worth a damn in the last six months, he's still. He's still a product. He's still a personality. Uh, 3MB are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And they're doing a not wonderful job of it. 3MB is not getting buried. They're getting spots on Raw every week. How yeah, I mean, we, we, we keep thinking this mentality of people, well, if you're not here, then you're buried. You got to think about, like, uh, what happened, you know, 10 years, or not 10 years, 20 years ago, when if you weren't the heel that fought Hulk Hogan, you weren't anywhere near that spot. You yeah, know, but that sword. Coco, Coco Beware didn't get buried for 20 years. He just was in the spot that Coco Beware was supposed to be. And that's why he's in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. You can't compare it to 20 years ago, though. No. Because they have a weekly television program now. They have a monthly pay-per-view. You're not building up three months for one match. Mm -hmm. Like, you're building up three weeks, maybe, if you're lucky. So, I mean, maybe buried isn't the right word, but definitely de-pushed. That's fine. Everybody needs a cool-off period. Again, we talked about earlier tonight when you had two belts, yet yet you had... don't like hit the height of your heat. Yeah, but you said about I'm not like, and it's like I said, he's still over. He's yeah. still over. Punk's I, still I, over. I mean, Punk had a great storyline with Paul the, Heyman. The Holly is still over. The, over doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just like you're talking about him having heat and having momentum. People are still chaining yes. People are still chaining Daniel Bryan. That's yep. all that matters. Nobody has killed that momentum yeah. I mean, because they're eating with the Wyatt. If it leads to him winning at WrestleMania or winning the Rumble or something, mm. then that's fine. It doesn't matter what it leads to. It doesn't matter what it leads yeah, it to. It, it, his place in the company is where he is right now. Exactly. You you said it yourself he, that they what have Daniel Bryan now. did established have... himself. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, I want to no, hear from what LB. Daniel Bryan did. The time he spent in the main event picture established himself as a major player in the WWE to the point where before uh, just a handful of people would kind of chant for him and you know us, we really liked him, and now everybody's fucking crazy about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. his yeah. merchandise. They haven't know. done anything to devalue that. No. Mike, you all said they it did yourself. was take him out of the main event scene. Yeah, and, and, said- and make the Wyatts look good. Mm-hmm. Mike, you said it yourself. You can't compare it to 20 years ago because they have weekly television programs now and all this new stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right, which means being in that WWE title picture or being in, you know, going for that championship at Mania doesn't, it's not the be all end all. You want to talk about somebody that's being buried? Zack Ryder. Absolutely. Yeah, he's not on TV. He hardly. pissed somebody off. Fuck, where's he been? You know, I'm sure he's doing superstars or something, but. You know, they after, were in his hometown, and he didn't have oh, a great yeah. match on Raw. Oh yeah, I, I think I think uh, Labar had a really good point. He tweeted, "It's like, wow, they're in Long Island, and nobody has chanted we want Ryder." Right. You know, that's being buried. That is that is we just flattened your tires that's and left you on the side of the road. I don't know why you're still here. You know, but Zach Ryder got his peak. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, got he, didn't, peak. he didn't do anything he, to sustain He was in a kind of champion Zach for a Ryder's week. peak in a wheelchair while John Cena tongue-fucked his girlfriend? That's <laughs> his <laughs> peak? <laughs> you almost made me That sounds it. like a good week for me. <laughs> his peak was winning that U.S. title. It was. That it he was. lost in two he's weeks. Right. He's right. He's right. But no, he's right because it was a peak. Zach was a Ryder, that gimmick is not going to be a world title contender. No, and it doesn't not need to be. At any level. Not on any level. Not at that point. It was never going to be a world title. Contest. He got the peak of winning the U.S. title, and he so got, now he can be off TV, he, and it's not consistent. No, but called. they never gave Brian that moment. They almost gave him the moment at SummerSlam, then they took it away. <laughs> they That's, gave him the moment. He was WWE champion. Everyone went fucking crazy okay, in that building. And you argued. You just said 
that Ryder lost the belt in two weeks. Daniel Bryan lost the WWE title in 10 minutes. I'm not saying uh, it matters when you lose the belt. Ryder isn't on fucking TV. He hasn't been on TV for years. That's the part where he's being buried. Mm. Uh, What I'm saying is he hit his peak. Zack Ryder peaked already. All right. He didn't update his gimmick. He didn't adapt. He didn't do anything. Even after they pushed him off the stage or whatever, he's still doing the same damn bullshit he was doing when he had the, the Z true Long Island story thing. Yeah. He hasn't up. He hasn't tried anything new. He hasn't done anything with the limited TV time that he's gotten. Brian right. has adapted and updated, and, ne- and was never given a peak yet. That's why I'm saying if it pays off at <laughs> WrestleMania, it's all well and good. But if it doesn't, then it's just a wasted opportunity. You're well, right. Daniel Bryan did reinvent himself, and that's why I, he's on I TV love, every week. I and that's love, why he's main eventing Raw. I love this philosophical discussion on what buried means. Um, <laughs> but I want to get to something else here so we can get out of here. Uh, in lieu of learning what you are finding out what you learned in wrestling this week, um, I want to know. Wait, wait, my my thing well, froze. Well, what? 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 <laughs> what? I'm sorry. My my feed completely froze and. And I have one more thing to say. Oh, okay. My, my power went out. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I was wondering what happened. Are, are Bobby, you, are you <laughs> operating at like the the Super Bowl dome? <laughs> no, my, my power just went out. <laughs> and that's why I got kicked out and I had to come back in. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the 21st century. Thank you. Yeah. I was with Abe, Abe Lincoln for a second there. We were reading by candlelight. <laughs> I was podcasting by candlelight. I was be- <laughs> tweeting with a torch. <laughs> okay, so pay-per-view net revenues. Mm-hmm. Um, the percentage of revenue for the WWE in uh, in 2010, it was 15%. 2011, 16%. Okay. And 2012, 17%. It has uh, gone up consistently wow. uh, over the past three years. Um, it looks like their biggest earners um, – where is that here? Uh, live events are um, – live events have actually gone down um, 22% in both 2010 and 11 and 21% in 2012. That's not a huge loss, but I'm sure they're still pissed about it. Um, what was the other big one here? Um Oh, here we go. Uh, of course, television rights are their biggest earners. Yeah. Um, and they were uh, 27, 27, and 29 in 2010, 11, and 12, respectively. So 29% in 2012 of their revenue, which was $139.5 million, came from TV rights. Um, consumer products uh, – 20%, generally 20 to 18%. That went down in 2012. On demand is only 1%. It has only been 1% since it started. Yeah, that's why it's getting cut. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I am licensing. the 1%. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Licensing is also surprisingly low. 11% went down to 10% in 2012. Um, what was that? And uh, What was that part? Licensing. Licensing. So that's like, that's like toys and... and, and t-shirts and 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 whatever you would have wwe on little crappy balls you find at dollar general that's That's right yeah and music music apparently is a is a very uh big part of it and um yeah uh ten percent uh magazine publishing one percent really home video was only seven percent yeah not surprising magazine being one percent magazines next to go no Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> I don't remember. I do not remember the last WWE magazine. Uh, I am currently have a digital subscription to the WWE magazine on my. IPad. I can see them keeping digital, but, but the other one, yeah, like, so it's still it's still a right. small percent, but it's still this is one percent of how many millions of dollars? Yeah, yeah. Uh, WWE magazine and WWE Kids magazine uh, brought in do 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 do. $5. Six million dollars. Six million dollars in two thousand. Wow. Yeah, let's just eliminate six million dollars of revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's not happening. That. I'm sorry. Yeah. That that at least pays for the jet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> WWE.com. Interestingly enough, four um, percent in 2012, bringing in nineteen point seven million dollars. I believe it. WWE. Have you have com. you noticed the advertising on that site? Yeah. 
I, I okay. talked about numbers, it. it, numbers it and I wonder more than 352 million pages and approximately 27.8 million video streams per month. That's why wow. those are free. Also, and, and I also wonder, I, I do want to find out, uh, and I'm, it's probably not going to be their report. I wonder how much advertising from YouTube comes from those videos I uploaded that I wrote about on Sorgatron.com. Uh, <laughs> because if you upload a WWE thing, they don't take it down. They just throw advertising on it. They throw pre-roll ads on it. I found a mm -hmm. diaper commercial in front of one when I went back to watch it because I realized I had somehow I had acquired the Armageddon from Pittsburgh, and I don't remember how. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I should watch this. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's, yeah, they, I think got a big chunk out of that. Yeah, and again, you see like, oh, 1%, 4%. That's still, we said $6 million. That's, that's significant. Mm -hmm. That's crazy significant. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's... That's, that's interesting and you gotta you gotta think like well, well why do they get rid of why don't they get rid of pay-per-views that was what percentage like 18 something like that yeah like something in the like teams, that if they're that gonna is, be cutting costs it's that not is coming a, out of pay-per-views yeah it's not coming out of pay-per-views and and that the revenue's gone up and you know we look at the numbers and they kind of like oh they were flat da, da, da. it's like no they're still making money they're still going to do it this is business as usual um right. and i and, wonder how much of the pay-per-view revenue has to do with wrestlemania though that's true too. That uh, it's probably. I'm sure uh, that breakdown is in here, but yeah, God yeah, damn, yeah. If it was hard enough it. finding this. If you get into it, good digging, man. Um, one one last interesting tidbit: WWE Studios is not doing well. No, yeah, <laughs> 2010 and 2011, it was four percent. In 2012, it was two percent. But what those numbers translate to is 2010, 19.6 million. Uh, 2011, 20.9 million, and in 2012. It dropped to seven point nine million dollars. Well, remember, that, it made films, though. look what they did though. They did the straight to video stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the box offices on the Wikipedia for them, you see a whoop. You know, because uh, you're making more on the DVD sales, but I, I think I think it's also you're not sending stuff like John Cena and Twelve Rounds to the theater. That's going to get you more money right off the bat, right? Uh, versus straight to video. Yeah, you'll make money if you didn't spend much on the movie, but I yeah, there's that's a, that's a whole different game, and I think they're still trying to figure it out. So, mm -hmm. well, I, I'm curious to see what they do after this year with uh, uh, the call and Dead Man Down because we actually had a good discussion last week on Movie Minute uh, with Malengo, huh? Um, ab about how they did and a little bit about WWE Studios. Go check it out, Movie Minute uh, number ten over at SorgatronMedia.com if you want to kind of see our little discussion about that. Because I watched it and down uh, last week for it. So, um, excellent. Thanks. So now I want to. Hey, Thanksgiving's coming up. Uh, this is the time where we have horrible turkey costume in TNA. Um, oh, we have back. tended. Also, Feaster fired. Feast are fired, apparently. Uh, WB usually has some kind of food fight. I think they still have that. Yeah, you do on Friday. I think they still have that. Um, Gobbly Gooker. There's a video of Gobbly Gooker office pranks on WB.com, by the way. Uh, I think that's a new video. Uh, so, so everything you love about Thanksgiving, I missed the giant egg. I wondered what was in there. <laughs> I, I thought it was Lady Gaga. I thought it was going to be a wrestler. So I'm pretty really sure. Like well, technically, I you was, were right. Sir. I was kind of right. I, I was that Conan or something. Hector Guerrero. Was Hector Guerrero close enough? Um, yeah, yeah. Conan was Max Moon. So I wanted to know uh, what in professional wrestling are you thankful for coming around this year when you're thinking back? Uh, who's got one to start us off? Mm. Who's got? I'll one? do one. I'll do one. Go ahead. Amen. I was, was going to wait, but I'll do one. Go ahead. Is yeah, um, same with you, chat room. Same, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm thankful for really some really awesome wrestling. There's a lot of guys, and, and specifically in WWE, but also just in general. Um, phenomenal wrestling, a lot of new people, a lot of breakouts, a lot of people that it's great to see people trying stuff and then either being really successful or even failing at it. Like It's just great to see um, sort of a level of creativity. It feels like a reinvigoration, almost a professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I mean, like I said, especially in WWE, I've been loving the product as of late. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. I also have to mention, I'm also very thankful this year uh, for uh, wrestling that 
I'm working for an independent wrestling company, so that's <laughs> cool. I'm very thankful for that. So, the ultimate come around, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Awesome. Hey, man, who's next? I've got one. Okay. I, of course, am thankful for the good things in professional wrestling, the exciting matches and dynamic characters, but I'm also thankful for the bad things in wrestling. The TNAs, and the crappy matches, and the boring things. I'm also thankful for the ridiculous things, the three-man band, and your Zack Ryders, and your you know weird, goofy skits for like the WWE Shop Zone stuff. Because <laughs> all of this forms a rich tapestry, and without the good and the bad and the ridiculous stuff in uh, WWE and elsewhere, we wouldn't have anything to talk about on this show. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's what I'm thankful for. Amen. Uh, well, yeah. How about you, Bobby? <laughs> I am thankful for Chris Jericho coming back this year. Okay. I am also thankful that um, we kind of have stables and tag team wrestling again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm thankful for. Uh, what about you, Mike? Okay, I am thankful for um, the dancing divas of WWE, <laughs> whether it be Emma, Summer Rae. Or even the Funkadactyls. Mm-hmm. I am thankful for Antonio Cesaro's giant swing. I am thankful for Joseph Park. And mm-hmm. I am thankful for the Impact Hangouts on Thursday nights because I have never laughed so hard watching something so bad. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I gotta say, I'm thankful, uh, uh, wrestling-wise, as far as watching wrestling, I'm thankful for discovering NXT. I know I'm not caught up on it, but I enjoy it thoroughly when I do get time to pound through a few episodes. I like this amalgam of feeling like WWE has their own indie promotion, you know, and actually seeing something kind of new and fresh. And and, and I love the getting excited when we see somebody like a Wyatt's or uh, Big E, or, or, you know, any of those guys that kind of filter up through the system are like, yes, now everybody, it, it's kind of got that same feeling of, you know, when we watched indie wrestling and, and you saw your Daniel Bryans and your CM Punks and your Samoa Joes come up and you, you kind of have that feeling of, yes, now everybody's going to know what I loved about this guy. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think you get to see that happen with NXT. And I think more people now get to have that feeling on a broader scale. Um, and I think I I think they they've really kind of uh, honed in what they're doing as far as that devo- developmental. On a personal note, the guy I would go along I wasn't going to, but Eamon started it uh, on a, on a working uh, side. I'm really pleased with um, um, where I've been able to go this this year, um, thanks to pro wrestling. Um, um, you know, thanks to our DVD release, uh, got to go to WrestleCon and, and hence go to uh, WrestleMania. I uh, got to go to uh, Michigan to uh, do some shooting for another documentary and meeting some really interesting people along the way. Um, and not to mention just the people that come in and out of, of these shows that we do here locally uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, so that's been really that's been really exciting for me and uh, uh, kind of digging, uh, uh, you know, kind of where we go with that. And I hope to uh, bring a lot of the mayhem along for the ride for that. So here in the future. So with that, and please let us know uh, in the chat room. We have, uh, and you guys can let us know at Mayhem Show. Um, just hashtag good it. Good times. Really, or good times. Good times. Or like Mayhem Show. <laughs> let us know. Or drop it on the Facebook. I'll probably drop a, uh, if I can, I, I'll try to drop a what are you thankful for question on the Facebook and the Google Plus and everything, please. Uh, 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 Wheels is actually thankful for meeting Nash, Devon, Goldust, and many others. Uh, I've had the pleasure to work with. And, of course, he's also uh, lucky enough to be working uh, with local indies, of course, doing sound for RWA and others. And oh God, Matt Carlin's just fell down. Sorry, oh, no. that, buddy. Matt Carlin's down. Matt Carlin's down. Oh, jeez. Oh, he lost his hair. <laughs> but that, guys, thanks a lot. Hit us up. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> Uh, 412-206-WMS0. Um, go check us out again. Facebook, uh, you, YouTube. You know, yeah, of course. Google Plus. And, of course, um, at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Until next week, have a happy holiday. Mayhem out. Happy Thanksgiving. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait for